Hey, guy from New Plastic, and let's use Photoshop's AI for some cool and unique bokeh effect. I made a pack of custom bokeh images made this way, which can be used with any engine, which also includes a set of procedural bokeh effects for Octane, which I'll also show you how to do in a different video. It's very affordable, so check it out on the New Plastic Gumroad store if you feel like you need it. It's a great way to support the channel, along with getting prints and pins I made from the Pink High Gumroad store. And of course, consider becoming a patron or a member so you could watch these videos with no ads, get access to the project files, free products from the store, as well as other cool perks, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Follow me on Instagram at ojeng or the channel at Brand New Plastic. Join our Discord, subscribe, listen to Lex Friedman. Let's go. Okay, so I have this scene here with some nice bokeh in the background, which is just coming from the HDRI. So we get quick responses in the live viewer. And I could turn this thing off too, honestly. We don't need it. Just an HDRI and bokeh, super fast rendering. So my camera has pretty high focal length, which probably doesn't matter that much with an HDRI, but generally in real life, bokeh is achieved with more long lenses. And f-stop is pretty low, which is why the bokeh is pretty strong. If I turn it up, you can see all the light spots that are exploding into our beautiful bokeh. But let's make it even more beautiful. First, make sure your camera type is set to universal and camera mode to thin lens. And in the depth of field section, we have all the bokeh settings. By default, it's set to circles, but you can play with some of these settings and get pretty cool and diverse results. But that's not the point of this video. We want to create our own unique, one of a kind aperture shapes. So first, let's change the shape to custom. And now we have the area here where we can load an image. So I'll go to the new beta version of Photoshop and I have a square 1000 pixel size canvas. We don't need to go too high with the resolution. Paint it black. And if I just use any white shape here and save it, then in Cinema, add Octane's image texture node and load the PSD file. And let me just reset all these settings here. Would you look at that? It's a P-shaped bokeh. And some of these settings will still affect the image for some extra details. But this is boring. Let's try something cooler. I'll just draw a simple shape, feather the selection a bit. And in the new beta version, we have the AI image generator here. So I'll just write something simple like dusty grain texture. And after around 10, 20 seconds, I have this, which is something. I can check out the other two options it gives me. We can do better. Let's restore the selection and maybe write something like dust and hair overlay texture. And okay, this is much, much cooler. Really beautiful and subtle textures. Let's save this one, reload the PSD, and that's cool. I'll actually scale the shape up a bit because it seems a bit too small. And you can tell our exposure went down because the shape is smaller and dirtier, so we can just increase the exposure. And already we get these really subtle but unique shapes. Let's keep trying. This time I'll use a shape, use spherized distortion to round it up a bit, select and feather, and let's just have fun with it. Maybe try something like black hole, chromatic aberration, stars, abstract. And okay, this is cute. I can select one of these options and add more text here to modify it. So let's add grainy dust and see what's up. And yeah, ooh, some nice subtle details here. Let's save this one. Not bad. Octane doesn't have the ability to have chromatic aberration in camera yet, so we're not going to get any of the color in the bokeh, but other engines will be able to show that. I'll make a redshift version next as well. Okay, let's just keep experimenting. Let's draw a really weird shape. Glowing edges, grainy microscope, texture, cellular noise. Okay, ooh, some of these are cool. Let's try this amoeba looking thing. Scale it up and maybe up the exposure a bit. Come on, dude, this is so cute. It's a bit phallic, but you know, you've never seen a bokeh like this one. And I can reduce the f-stop to increase the size of the bokeh. Yeah, it actually looks super cool, big or small. Let's try just some abstract strokes and use this selection with something like directional noise, abstract, line pattern, distorted, fuzzy, slight RGB split. Sick. Maybe without the RGB split? Okay, not much different, but really dope detail. So I can also duplicate this layer choose another version and blend them together for some extra detail. And maybe we don't even need the colors. Uh, I don't know why I love this so much. It's so simple and easy and effective. And we can combine it with aberration distortion to spice it up even more. I mean, beautiful. Let's just do a simple circle. Old grain texture, distorted Zeiss lens. I don't know, I'm really just testing different things. Okay, I mean, that's a no, but let's modify it with abstract glow highlight edges blown out. That's more like it. Let's test this one. Cute. This one. Cute. And we can even break it up further. Let's do three shapes. 
And maybe abstract bokeh light leak fireflies. Ooh, I'm curious about this one. Ooh, this is the best one. So yeah, I think you get the idea. You can just make whatever you want, blend them together and just have fun with it. This is actually the first time I ever used Photoshop's AI tool. And I honestly think it's a really fun and quick experiment. In the next video, I'll show you how to make procedural bokeh, which is actually fucking awesome. Get the bokeh pack from my Gumroad. Check out the prints and pins on my other Gumroad. Consider supporting on Patreon. And a big thanks to all my brilliant patrons and members you see on the screen right now. I love you, have a great day, peace.